Well, hey, everybody. All right, this is going to be the third video in the uh, off grid camper series. And this video is going to be on fire. But more precisely, like I'm thinking in terms of wilderness survival, shelter was the first video, water was the second video, fire is going to be the third video. But this isn't so much wilderness survival as it is just plain survival. So what is fire? Well, fire is light. That's how we get our light to see by at night. Fire is what powers our vehicles through gasoline exploding and moving the piston up and down and making the tires turn on a vehicle. Fire is where we get our electricity from via coal or some other fuel source being burned to generate electricity. So in a real world survival sense, fire is energy. So this video is going to show you all the different forms of energy I use here at the off-grid camper in the woods. And I want to be as straight and to the point as possible and provide you with the uh, what I used and how much it cost to use it so that hopefully that can help anyone who's considering doing this or in my situation forced into doing this. So let's get right to it. A lot of different options and I know the first thing people think of is wood. Well, I didn't go with wood. I'll probably explain why in a later video. What I ended up going with was liquid propane. That's what this tank is here. This is a small 120 gallon liquid propane tank. It costs, depending on the price of propane, last year it cost me about 110 bucks to fill it. This year it's costing me about 180 bucks to fill it. And the price is probably going to go up. That tank lasts me five to six weeks. When I first got here, I was just using these small 30 pound propane tanks. I have two of them and they didn't last very long and it's a lot more expensive buying it by the pound versus the gallon. And you also have to take into consideration the cost of driving up somewhere perhaps far away to get those small tanks filled every few days or every week at the most um, or at the least. If I was running off just those two small tanks they would probably last me about a week if I was lucky. Um, you can see my stove pipe here that's how I heat the house. What I'll do is uh, I'll take you inside now and uh, show you some other things inside. Put a little addition on here, just a little storage shed. Let me take you around back first because this is part of that fire or energy equation. I have two. 100 watt solar panels. I'm going to probably get into this in a later video, but I just want to give you what it is and how much it costs. This is where I get all of my electricity 100%. That's 200 watts of solar power. And all in all, with the batteries, the cables, the wiring, installing it myself, it was $600. That's how I charge my phone, and that's how I provide lights inside. That's also how I run my electric drill or a microwave or a coffee maker or an electric razor, things of that nature, if I choose to. But like I said, I'll get into that more in a later video. Take you inside. Might get a little noisy. Here's one of the 30 pound tanks. I've got the uh, like buddy heater extension hose going through the wall.
And right here, for a backup heat source, I have a portable buddy heater with one of those ceramic elements. This is 4,500 BTU or 9,000 BTU. There's no thermostat, so it just runs all the time if you use it. That was 89 bucks delivered to my door. The 10 foot hose that connects it to this 30 pound tank was, I don't know, 20 bucks or so. Let's go inside. Get you set up. Let's hold on a minute. Turn on some lights here. Let me get you on up here. This is a lot of what I'm going to show you. And also my heater. But let's see, let me take you back here first. <clears throat> my solar power comes in here, and right over here, you can see my little charge controller. It has a couple USB hookups for charging your phone and stuff, which is nice. Behind my picture here. I have a 750 watt power inverter so that I can run 110 if I need to. I've got that so it's wired right into the camper. The solar power is wired right into the camper. These lights are running off solar power. But again, I'll get into that more in detail if you guys want in a later video. Let me see if I got you set up good. Try and keep these videos short, but I am going to show quite a bit in this video, so it may be a little over 10 minutes. We'll see. <clears throat> so when I first um, planned out doing this, I wasn't exactly sure how things were going to work. I thought I might be living in a tent. Um, or just under a tarp in the woods, uh, wasn't quite sure. So the first thing I got as far as fire was this small 15 watt portable solar panel. It's, uh, only five volt. In hindsight, I would try and find something that was 12 volt because it would be a lot more useful in the long run. But this is enough to charge my phone and things of that nature. It has two USB hookups. And it's nice and small, so if I was backpacking or on my bicycle or who knows what, I would have a way to keep my phone charged because how else am I going to uh, be able to communicate? with the outside world. I think that communication is a very important thing and without it um, you're really going to limit yourself um, in my opinion. <clears throat> so that was a priority for me. I knew about wilderness survival so I could easily go out in the woods and build a fire and stay warm and dry and hunt food or whatever so that wasn't as much of a priority as simply having a form of electricity so that I can uh, charge my phone, access my bank account, stuff like that. That little portable charger was like 60 bucks shipped to my door. Uh, a couple other things I've used, um, of course I have the uh, space heater. Uh, let me show you that since I mentioned it. Now when I first got here, and I found this camper, um, the camper has a furnace right down there. It's a forced air furnace, and there's a thermostat 
and everything and it works it works off the liquid propane i could be uh driving down the road being pulled by a uh truck and i could be in here with the furnace running technically let me uh get a little more light on the subject over there it looks a little dark hopefully that's better <clears throat> But my aunt gave me this little space heater. It's pretty outdated. It's uh, 19,000 BTU, and it's uh, it must be vented outside. So that makes it, uh, well, just being old makes it pretty inefficient. Um, but it's enough to keep the place above freezing in the wintertime when it's zero degrees or even minus 10 degrees. It will keep it just above freezing, so that's enough to uh, survive. The nice thing about it though is I have this big surface area and I can actually cook on this and I can also heat water on it. So in the winter time I'll take my, uh, this is a three gallon stainless pot but I also have a big six gallon one. I'll just fill it with water and sit it on top of here and by the next morning I have uh, three to six gallons of hot water. I can also cook a big soup in that if I want to. Whoa, it's falling all over the place. <laughs> Everything is falling all over the place now. But, uh, <laughs> I can cook soup in it. I even went out, uh, I was given a uh, turkey for Thanksgiving. And I thought, well, I don't really want to take the turkey because I don't have any way to cook it. My oven doesn't work here, and uh, it's kind of hard to cook a turkey, a whole big turkey on a stovetop. But what I did is I bought one of those uh, aluminum roasting pans for a dollar and some aluminum foil. And I just put the turkey in there, covered it with aluminum foil with a little bit of water in there, uh, put it on at night, woke up the next morning, and the perfect the perfect turkey was done. It was uh, nice and juicy. Um, I was surprised how well it got done. Even the uh, the skin had gotten nice and brown, I guess from the aluminum foil being on it. And I threw some vegetables in there and came back an hour and a half later and the veggies were done and I had a big old turkey dinner right here. Didn't uh, take any effort at all. Just throw the turkey in there put the tinfoil on it, wake up the next morning, and you got Thanksgiving dinner. So that was like awesome. Got this little non-electric fan to circulate air, but that's beyond the scope of this video. I know people are going to wonder about it, so it's a little tight in here, so I got to do a little dance with you to get you set up. I've actually got you... Uh, well, let me take you over here real quick. I don't know if you can see, but I have you mounted to my tripod with electrical tape. I uh, couldn't think of any other way to mount you. I guess duct tape would have been more appropriate or, or rope. I don't know. but uh, I got you on there and uh, it seems to be working. So, try and get this all lined back up again. <clears throat> so when I first got here, I didn't have the space heater and I didn't have that big 120 gallon tank. So, and I didn't have the portable buddy heater either. All I had was a small 1500 watt uh, infrared type heater. For ice fishing and uh, I'm not gonna bring that out because it's buried but it's just your standard 1500 watt ice fishing heater that runs off these one pound propane tanks and that was how I heated the place um, until I got the uh, space heater hooked up and stuff and I will tell you that's a bad way to go because these one pound tanks up here where I live are about seven bucks a piece which is very expensive.
the cheapest you can find them up here is $5.69 each, and that's if you buy a two-pack. So that's just outrageous. But that was how I heated the place. And then um, I didn't have the solar panels either, so I used uh, this small, well, it's my ice fishing propane lantern that runs off liquid propane. It's just a one mantle propane lantern. Runs off these little bottles. That was enough to give me light. And then uh, I had the 30 pound tanks hooked up and I got those filled so I could use the stove, but in case something happened with the stove, uh, what am I gonna do? Of course I can go outside and build a little campfire and cook food, boil water, whatever, but that's really inconvenient. Um, especially if it's winter time uh, so again for ice fishing and camping I've had this little single burner propane stove top that uh, fits these one pound tanks so that's what I use there um, the little lantern is probably 20 30 bucks now they used to be a lot less expensive the uh, single burner Again, it's probably 20, 30 bucks now as well. That stuff's all 20, 30 years old for me, so I probably paid 10 bucks for it brand new. One thing I did get is because those one pound tanks are so expensive to fill or to uh, buy, I bought this little adapter. And what, what this will do is it'll hook to the large 30 pound tank and uh, you can refill these one pound tanks with it. That's what I did. I think that was 10 bucks. So now I have probably five or six of these and I can just take the 30 pound tank and uh, fill those up and store them away for uh, emergency purposes. And of course I got lighters. I've got this lighter. For the stove top because this stove doesn't have a, a man uh, pilot well if I want to use it I just have to uh, turn on the gas and ignite it with this I just keep that sitting right there that's how I make my coffee that's how I do my cooking. I pretty much use my camping gear for cooking. Sometimes I use a big pot to uh, make a big soup and then uh, eat on it throughout the week. Let's see here. I get to turn back around. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm forgetting. But I think that's pretty much it. <clears throat> I use the solar power to provide my electricity for lighting and for charging my phone primarily. I don't really use it for much else. I have used the microwave. There's a built-in microwave in the camper. Uh, that 750 watt inverter is enough to power a 700 watt microwave. It'll power my roughly 800 watt full-size gaming personal computer um, it will also run an electric drill it'll run uh, a jigsaw things of that nature it won't run well I haven't tried but it shouldn't be able to run my 10 amp circular saw um, or rip saw but I do have a backup generator. It's a small 1800 watt generator that I bought online for a hundred bucks shipped to my door. Uh, again, it's buried. I'm not going to bring it out, but you can, you know, research that yourself. It's just a gas powered generator and uh, that's a backup electric source. Plus it's also a backup to um, charge my batteries for the solar power if the solar power uh, gets run down for some reason which this time of year when it's uh, once it starts getting up around mid-august 
all the way through I don't know December January it's a really rough time for the solar because you get a lot of snow on the panels you got to keep going out there and wiping it off and also you have uh, up until all the leaves fall off the trees which a lot of the oak trees even though it's mid-December still have leaves on them there's lots of pines here that don't lose their needles so they put shade on those solar panels and it's kind of inefficient so having the uh, generator is kind of nice um, I'm getting to the point now where my uh, my solar may actually shut off because it's dropping down to about 12.1 volts and once it gets uh, below a certain point it will quit providing power and charge those batteries back up if that happens then I'll probably power up the generator and try and charge those batteries back up but uh, I'm gonna just try and conserve I'm really running a lot of lights in here today I usually try to just run one light at a time but to make the video I gotta have the lighting so doing that and uh, oh one other option for lighting which I use were these small LED uh, candles that use a AAA battery my step kid give me that another guy that lives up here give me this one which I kinda like it's more like a real candle it's actually made out of wax and of course if you saw any of my videos last fall when my solar was down uh, because of what I just explained I was using candles so those are always nice to have around. I had a big stockpile of candles. Um, that's pretty much it. So 600 bucks for the 200 watt solar setup with the batteries and everything. And then, uh, you know, somewhere between 100 and 200 a month in the winter time for the liquid propane. Obviously, when when summer comes, when May rolls around, I get that 120 gallon tank filled, and it lasts me all the way through until like October, November. So uh, if I averaged it out last year, it was 60 bucks a month. This year, if the rates stay what they are now, it's going to be 50 percent more. So it's going to be 90 bucks a month, averaged out over a 12 month period. Obviously, you'll pay more in the winter, less in the summer. But that's uh, pretty much the expense. For the energy I have two gallons of gas on hand for the generator if I need it and uh, that's pretty much it I'd like to have uh, again you know when I come up here I wasn't quite sure how things were gonna be and it's always good when it comes to fire or, or any of these necessary survival items to have backup sources so I had the space heater I have the uh, the furnace that comes with the camper I have the stove top I have the little portable burner the portable uh, propane lantern the buddy heater uh, the big 120 gallon tank the small 30 pound tanks and even these one pound tanks and then I even have the LED lights and the candles and uh, all these different sources so if one fails I always have a backup and that's uh, an important part of uh, survival is, you know, having a backup to go to. It's uh, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, as they say, and then uh, find out that that option won't work. I could have come up here and uh, threw a bunch of money into a huge solar setup and realized that it was just too shady in here for it to be very efficient. And then I wouldn't have had money for other possibilities. But that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully it helps and uh, I know it's been a while getting this video up but uh, well hopefully it helps and hopefully it's been uh, worthwhile for you to watch the next video in the series is gonna be on food and then uh, I'll probably go into transportation and communication and then also, uh, I'll probably do a separate video on the uh, solar power itself. Show you how it's all wired and everything. Get more into the details of that. That's it. Thanks for watching.
Oops.